Hello, hello, bonjour. My name is Colbertine, host of the Colbertine Report, your monthly news with a French flavor. What's really worth talking about in the US and the rest of the world this month? I promise you bodacious comments. Remember, if the Colbertine Report doesn't make you smarter, it will not make you stupider. Thank you, thank you, merci, merci. Please take a seat. Welcome, nation. Happy to have you on the Colbertine Report. What matters in the US and the rest of the world this month? In the USA, the Republican Party and the Sweet 16 race to the nomination. Nation, aren't you amazed by the number of candidates for the Republican presidential nomination? The grand old party, or GOP, has no less than 24 wannabe president of the United States. Yes, 24. In case you didn't know, the acronym for President of the United States is POTUS, P-O-T-U-S. So these POTUS wannabes are ready? Three are in a hurry. They have already filed with the Federal Election Commission, Texas Senator Ted Cruz, Mississippi businessman Mark Everson, retiring from West Virginia, Jack Failure, Failure, with a name like that? It's very courageous to run. And 21 POTUS wannabes have shared their interests with the media. Florida Governor Jeb Bush, retired neurosurgeon Dr. Ben Carson, New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham, New York Governor George Pataki, Texas Governor Rick Perry, New York business magnate Donald Trump, Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker, U.S. Ambassador to the UN John Bolton, Maryland Governor Paul Ehrlich, former dismissed Hewlett Packard CEO Carly Fiorina, Virginia Governor Jim Gilmore, Arkansas Governor Mick Huckabee, Louisiana Governor Bobby Jondal, Ohio Governor John Kasich, New Jersey U.S. Representative Peter King, Kentucky Senator Rand Paul, Indiana Governor Mike Pence, Florida Senator Marco Rubio, Pennsylvania Senator Rick Santorum, and Michigan Governor Rick Snyder. What the fuck? Did the grand old party decide to have one presidential candidate per state? They are going to need some serious help to clean up their act. Hey, GOP, you're here, silent and dumbfounded. Let me help you sort out this mess. I can advise you on which candidates to keep. My solid political research is based on great smiles. In the US, only a candidate with a charismatic smile can win. Look at Obama, elected twice, right? So, I suggest that you keep Ben Carson. Look at that smile. Rick Perry. Look at that smile. And Mike Huckabee. With Huckabee, you have the bonus of the cute dimples. Plus, he plays the guitar. How cool is that? What do you think, grand old party? Carson, Perry, Huckabee. And I have to add two candidates. I would love to see them run. My friends Stephen Colbert and John Stewart. They will be available. Plus, look at their smile. Moving on, nation. In the rest of the world, Bibi Net on Yahoo. To a full house of Republicans, Bibi said, My friends, I'm deeply humbled by the opportunity to speak before the most important legislative body in the world, the U.S. Congress. Stop right here. How did Bibi convince the Speaker of the House, Boner, and Senate Majority Leader, Kentucky Fried McConnell, that this was a good idea? You have to give it to Bibi. All this behind Obama's back. VP Biden was noticeably absent, and Boner had even taken his place in the presidential line of succession. You go, Boner, sitting in the vice president's seat for once, you look good as number two. So now, let's see how Israel ranks based on population. 98 out of 200? Between 7 and 8 million inhabitants? Oh, it's similar to Jordan, Papua New Guinea, Hong Kong, or Bulgaria. Imagine one second Papua New Guinea's or Bulgaria's head of states giving a speech to the Congress and dictating what America's foreign policy should be. What would the Fox say? One of Fox News headlines was why it's important for Congress to at least listen to Israel's leader. 
So if Speaker Bonner invites next Papua New Guinea's head of state to speak to the American Senate and Congress, will Fox News headline be why it's important for Congress to at least listen to Papua New Guinea's leader? On The Daily Show, my friend John Stewart destroyed Bibi's performance and commented, whether Netanyahu achieved his goal of sabotaging a deal with Aaron or mistakenly opened up a rift in U.S.-Israeli relations, one thing is for certain. The in-chamber response to his speech was by far the longest blowjob a Jewish man has ever received. Oh, John, your insights are so deep and your comments so politically incorrect. Please run for president in 2016. Moving on, nation. No more. Or, as my friend Stephen Culver said, the word. Oh, really? Bill? Once upon a time, there was a little cute boy named Bill. He grew up to be a Fox News pundit with opinion that only Fox addicts care about. His latest opinion is in support of Indiana's Republican Mike Pence bill, giving the right to people in associations and businesses not to serve LGBT human beings under the pretext of religious beliefs. So if the reason to reject LGBT is based on Christian principles, I propose that we add the right to reject divorced human beings. How would you feel about that, Bill? And this was Le Mot. What the fuck? Is it over already? Yes, it is. I wish you a great time until next month. And remember, if the Corbettine Report doesn't make you smarter, it will not make you stupider. <laughs>